a question here. Maury asks, uh, I maintain a Microsoft list of events and activities in one team with a large number of people contributing, but I also have access to and responsibility to make updates to another leadership uh, team Microsoft list of similar events, another calendaring events list. Right. The problem is that there are entries on my first list that don't show up on the second list because the owners on my first list do not have access to both lists. Is there an easy way to automate entries between these lists? The answer is yes. <laughs> the short answer is yes, right? But you know, the tools are there. You can use Power Automate to cross post between. Now the, the thing you need to watch is that are, are you doing one for one? Maybe over here the entry items are like in a specific column have certain values and over here they have different ones. And then what makes it, um, there may be triggers that only certain items from those lists go over. So if it hits a certain status or it has a certain category or combination of those both, you kind of have to look at what makes this item in this one list need to be moved or copied to the other list. So you can move it, you can copy it either way, but if you want it to mirror, now again, we were talking earlier about syncing, you know, what if this mm -hmm. one gets changed? How do you make sure this one gets changed? But yeah, we, we had a similar question um, in this series that uh, around calendars, this one talking about lists specifically, <laughs> yeah. but it's essentially the same, the same, same issue. Same thing, yep. Yeah. But what is a calendar? A calendar is just a list. The calendar yeah. is just the presentation of that list data. Yep. Right. Yeah. And and so moving data around with a tool like Power Automate, I mean, that, that's kind of what it's designed for. So the key part now will be to establish the business rules. Much to what Sherry was saying, like, are you simply adding based on, on a certain event? An event could be adding a new row. Another event could be changing it a status value from draft to complete and that sends the work off and so you're going to have to handcraft something in power automate you know there's a little bit of a learning curve that but there's plenty of resources out there that will show you that type of pattern uh, i've blogged about this one in the past and i always get lots of uh, feedback on it because there's there's some nuances with list it's not all like string data or or mm -hmm numeric data you know they have these constructs like a person column and that's you know a bit tricky to to move over from one list to another or they have uh choice columns or choices columns where you can have multiple values selected so references are out there uh power automates a great tool maury Lottemeyer, and uh <laughs> <laughs> and you probably have lots of friends who know what they're doing with this stuff and would be more than happy to help you out. But list to list, moving data around, 100% possible using the tools you already have at your disposal. I, I have a question for Maury Lottemeyer, which is why are these two lists being maintained separately rather than as a single list in the lists application with everyone just having access to them? Different audiences was, was yeah. that. Yeah, right. and different yeah, sure. um, different need. Not everything in one list needs to be in the other, and it drives a dashboard. So they, mm -hmm. yeah. There's different so what ways I you didn't get out of yeah, this. Okay. What Go I ahead. didn't get out of this was that there were that some items wouldn't cross post. That's the part yeah. I wasn't understanding. Yeah. I yeah. understood yeah. that some items weren't cross posting because people weren't doing it. I didn't realize it was because there was a business reason not to do it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So these are all activities, which could be, you know, speaking events, blog articles, whatever they, all the events, they, all the activities, the only, and the second list only has events. So that was my understanding. Okay. Yeah. There's always, I mean, look, there's other things that you can, if you need to do more, you know, uh, you know, care and feeding these things. I mean, you could just like look at all net new items, have a flag, send a notification to somebody who could go in manually push those over, review them, push them. I mean, nobody wants to do that. We want to automate everything. And so it just happens in the background. And, and but there's always going to be the problem is like, OK, let's say you set a flag on those items and those and that other team. So the let's say the regular employees and management team. I like that, yeah. you know, and they may not know or may erroneously not set the flag to push it across. So having the eyeballs reviewing that stuff, you make sure that we look at all neck new. I see the flag. 
Did anybody miss the flag in those and then push it across manually? Um, so mo most, um, you know, for from a leadership team, especially we're talking about, you know, calendars and lists there, they're not in there looking at it in real time. They have uh, like a weekly meeting where they're reviewing. So you just schedule to do this, review everything every Wednesday. So it's updated Wednesday night before the Thursday meeting, you know, so you can automate. It's not going to catch everything that humans make a lot of errors around that. Um, but um, but you can automate a lot of that and it's pretty straightforward. Yeah. But then it doesn't have the relationship. It doesn't have the inheritance. If changes happen. Right. So it is, if it's updated and it's flagged and it's this, then go and find the matching one and update. Right. Those. And you've right. got to figure out what between the two. Is What's there an the event unique ID identifier or to something? Tell it. Yep. Yeah. So it's like when this matches this, then update it. Yeah. And so we go from Maury's technical question, like how can we achieve something? And we're starting to like get into this territory of, you know, should you have more than one source of truth and understanding business requirements and customization? And and that's those are suitable conversations to have when when it is a uh, <clears throat> you know, a, a large endeavor, but for something where it's just like informal working groups, just trying to get the job done, then using something like Power Automate to uh, to get it over with the least amount of effort is probably the best foot forward. Yep. Great question, Maury. <laughs>